So good morning. Uh, I'm really very happy to be here and to have to, the chance to meet you all after these years that were very hard for all of us. And uh, I also would like to thank William because he already gave a good introduction to, to my talk. Uh, so uh, my, my talk is about uh, mesons under strong magnetic fields in the number general senior model. I will go through a bit rather short introduction because already William gave one. And I will come, I'm sorry, to the extended number general senior model. Extended means that I will include vector mesons. And after describing the model, I have to calculate the masses of the neutral and uh, charge vector mesons, uh, uh, not, not only the vector mesons, but also, also the scalar mesons. I will show you some result for the neutral meson, result for the charge mesons, and uh, I will give some summary and conclusions. And my talk is based on these two works by uh, Carlo Magno, uh, Gomez Dun, Noguera, and myself, and also Isobi Schiafan here. And some related work can be seen in a poster by Max Coppola and Joanna Soldrin. So, this is, I think you all know this, that uh, in the last decade there have been a lot of interest in strong magnetic fields because of these possible applications in, in heavy ion collisions, uh, compact stellar matters, and the universe. And there were, therefore, this problem has been uh, studied in using different kind of models, number generation model, lattice QCD, color perturbation theory, quark models, etc. And there have been some reviews, which are now somewhat old, because they are something like seven years old. And since then, there have been already some developments. But uh, anyway, I think they are a very good starting point to, 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 for those interested in this kind of problems. So this is the uh, Lagrangian I will be using. Uh, contains, well, of course, uh, the, the free uh, quark term, which is here with the covariant derivative. It means it couples to the electromagnetic field. It has a scalar, so the scalar terms, which are these two. Note that I'm including isovector and isoscalar particles, so interactions, if you like. Then it has a, a vector term, vector-vector term, isovector, but it has also an isoscalar term. And finally, I include a tough term that uh, gets uh, mixed into the different flavors. So this is a gauge uh, action in the sense that here there is uh, the vector, uh, the, the vector field given by the magnetic field, pseudo vector. So this is a covariant derivative. These are the charges, and I will choose to work with the magnetic field along the third direction. I will. Uh, perform the calculations using the Landau gauge, but actually I can prove that all these results are gauge invariant. I mean, I could have used a different gauge and the result will be the same. I'm actually, most of the expressions I will use, I will show you, are basically gauge invariant. So, uh, to proceed and to work, since I'm interested in mesons, what I will do is to bosonize the theory, and uh, I will introduce scalars, so scalar and vectors fields. This A, remember, includes both iso, uh, isoscalar and isovectors. So these run from zero to three, okay, this A. So uh, uh, in order to simplify the, the notation, I introduced these two coupling constants, which are combinations of the top uh, the top coupling constant and the scalar of zero scalar coupling constant. It's, it's better to, to use these combinations because this alpha, which is defined this way, measure the, uh, how strong is the mixing between the, the, the flavors. So for alpha equal to zero, the flavors are the couple. So U and D behave separately. For alpha one half, you have make the maximum flavor mixing, this will correspond to the standard number general senior model. And alpha, the empirical alpha is around between, around 
2.1 to 2.2 that us usually is uh, tuned to get a reasonable value of eta prime, of eta, I'm sorry. Here, since I'm working in SU2, I will have kind of eta, which is not the physical eta because the physical eta has a mixing with eta prime. So you have to introduce the strange quarks in order to describe the actual eta. But is this eta is kind of combination of U and D only. Okay. So uh, I will expand the Boisson action in fluctuations ar around the mean field. So, and I will assume that only scalars have uh, non vanishing mean fields. This is as usual. And then this, uh, this operator, which is the, this operator here, can be expanded. And you have a term which is uh, the one that appears at mean field, and in addition, you have fluctuations. So the, the effective action can be expanded in, in these fluctuations, and you have a mean, mean field action, a quadratic action in the, in the fluctuations, in the, this fluctuation here, and, and so on. So at mean field, you have this effective action. Uh, this is the inverse pro quark propagator. Uh, and here uh, you have a combination of the scalar fields, the U and D scalar fields. And as I said, this alpha gives you how strong is the mixing between the U and D flavors. Uh, so in order to, to proceed, I have to uh, use some expression for the ma uh, magnetic field, I mean the quark propag pro propagator in the presence of the magnetic field. And as you all know, it can be written as a product of a Schwinger phase and a piece which is translational, translationally and gauge invariant. So this is, since this is translational invariant, it can be fully transformed. And I will use for this SP, I will use the, the Schwinger form. Uh, as William shown, uh, this has been, this can be also written in terms of the sum over Landau levels, but I will use this particular form. So the Schinger phase is given here, and of course the Schinger phase is not gauge invariant, and it's not translational invariant. No. Uh, now, uh, even at mean field level, I have to regularize the action, and I will use the magnetic field independent regularization that William discussed in minutes ago, and the only difference with, with his work is I will use a 3D cutoff for the vacuum instead of uh, polyvillers. But I will show, maybe if I have time, that results are basically independent of the particular way in, you re in which you, re you regularize the vacuum. Now, uh, the effective mass uh, can be obtained from the set of gap equations. So then I will go to the uh, meson sector. So if you, at a quadratic level, so at, at you, for a neutral meson, you get something like this. Uh, these are the meson fluctuations. As I said, it corresponds to scalar, pseudo-scalar, and vectors. And since I'm dealing here with the neutral, uh, this A can be z zero which is the isoscalar piece, or three, which is the neutral component of the isovector. Okay. Uh, I will rather use this notation, and uh, here you see the conversion between the notation I'm using and this more standard notation. So sigma zero is the sigma, pi zero would be the eta, and I put the quotation mark because again, this is an eta without strange content. Uh, Rho zero is what we usually call omega, uh -huh. and pi three, uh, sigma three, pi three, and rho three are the neutral components of the iso triplets, the pi iso triplet, the rho, the iso vector rho, and so on. So, for example, what William was talking about was basically this rho. Okay, but here I will also include. Yeah. Can you hear me better now? Okay, thank you. Uh, 
So, so this inverse propagator of the, of the mesons can be written as a sum of two terms, a diagonal term, and the term that mixes all possible vectors, vectors and isoscars. This coupling constant, the, this GM here, depends on the channel you're talking about. So for sigma 0 and sigma 3, this would be G. Uh, for the pi 0 and pi 3, are this combination here, and so on. So, uh, so this, uh, this J up here can be separated in the sum of subtraction dependent whether you are talking about isoscalar or isovector. This, this epsilon here, you see the si this sign here depends whether you are talking about isoscalar or isovectors. But it can be anyway separated between the U com contribution and the D contribution. Mm -hmm. And finally, this is the, the loop you have to calculate. And these are the uh, part propagators. And these gamma are the matrices that, again, depend on the channel you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, as you see, I'm considering here all possible mixings. Because uh, if I calculate this loop, for example, I can have a I gamma 5 here and a gamma mu here. And this will give you the pi rho mixing. Okay. And, well, now one important thing is that here the flavor is the same. So this is a neutral particle, so this F is the same as this F here. This means that when you replace the quark propagators, the Schwinger phases will cancel. It will become more clear in the case of the charge where they don't cancel, but here they cancel. Since they cancel, the, this uh, loop function turns out to be translational invariant. So it depends actually on x prime minus x. And since it's, it's so, I can fully transform everything. Okay? So I can expand, if you like, uh, these mesons, which were written in, in terms of the coordinates. I can fully transform them. And I can also fully transform this inverse propagator. So in a way, the inverse propagator becomes diagonal in the Fourier basis. And so I'm left with, I'm left with this, and then I have to calculate this loop function, where now here it appears only the translational invariant part of the propagator Fourier transform. Again, these functions are divergent, so I have to regularize them. And again, I will regularize using the magnetic field independence. So I will subtract them, the contribution coming from B equal to 0. So, okay. so when you do that, uh, you, the first, now you do that. And then in addition, I put all the mesons at rest because I want to calculate the masses. So I set three, uh, I mean, vector Q equal to 0. And in that case, you can see that the scalars decouple. So there is no mixing between scalars and pions and rows. And these are the only mixings that survive. There is a pi, pi A pi B, meaning that, for example, the pi 0 mixes with pi 3. This means that eta mixes with pi, if you like. But there is also a mixing between pi and rho because the magnetic field breaks uh, spin. So in principle, you can have mixings of that type. And this is non vanishing And you have also the rho rho, of course. So since I'm working with particles at rest, I can use uh, the polarization vectors for the rho, taken as usual and at rest. So these are the what I call parallel, meaning that they correspond to spin parallel to the magnetic field. And this is perpendicular, meaning that the spin is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So this is spin 0, and this is spin plus minus 1. Well, once you do all that, in principle, since, uh, since the, the, uh, the scalars decouple, you have uh, eight part, uh, yes, eight particles that are mixed 
because you have two possible, uh, you have isoscalar and isovector, you have three polarization for the vectors and so on. So you have in principle a matrix of eight by eight, but this matrix of eight by eight decouples as shown here, and a, a matrix of four by four that mixes the isoscalar vector, the isovector vector, so rho and omega if you are perpendicular, perpendicular, which means spin zero, with the pion and the eta. So there you have a four by four matrix. And then you have another two, two by two matrices, which corresponds to the mixing between uh, rho and omega, if you like, parallel, so plus one and minus one. So G, G uh, perpendicular correspond to the mixing of these four particles, which are spin zero, and this, you have two matrices of two by two, one correspond to set, set plus one and the other minus one. So you have to calculate the determinant of these matrices, and from the determinant of those matrices, you can calculate the masses. But you can also calculate the, the composition of each state. Hmm? So let me go now to the vectors. We, we charge meson, I'm sorry, charge mesons. At the quadratic level, it's, it's again something like this. So this is for the charge plus, but there is something equivalent for charge minus, which is completely equivalent, so I will not write it. And now M is correspond to pi plus and rho plus, which are the ones that it might mix. Uh, the inverse propagator is this, and this, this polarization function is now given like this. So, you see here, I have written the propagator, the quark propagator as a product, again, as of the Schwinger phase and the invariant part. So here you have the invariant part. So this is translational invariant and also gauge invariant. However, here, these phases do not cancel because now they correspond to different flavors. Note that this goes from x to x prime and this from x prime to x. So one is minus, so for example, in the case of the equal flavor for the neutral mesons, this phase will be canceled by this one. But now this doesn't happen. So the total phase, using that the, the sum of the charge have to be the charge of the, of the mesons, so the total phase is like the phase corresponding to the pi plus or rho plus. So this means that this J now is not translational invariant and it is not gauge invariant. Actually, it's gauge covariant, okay? So Schinger phase doesn't vanish. In fact, you need that it has to be gauge covariant in order to have this to be completely gauge invariant. So translational invariance is not broken, so you cannot just Fourier transform as before to diagonalize this. You have to use a different basis, okay? Now, this means that you have to expand the, the fields, not in terms of plane waves as before, but you have to use a different functions. And these functions are the solutions of the Klein-Gordon equation in the presence of the magnetic field. This is what I call F. Here, Q bar plays, plays the role of the momentum, but now it's not the real momentum, because here the first index is the Landau level. Okay? And this is in, in the Landau gauge the other three are like the momenta, but this is, in, in another case, you, you won't have Q2. You will have the angular momentum of the particle, for example. So, and this D here are Hermit, Hermit polynomials, basically a combination of Hermit polynomials. So th this is well known, actually, if you think about it, because this corresponds to an harmonic oscillator in the, in, in the plane perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay, in the Landau gauge. So for the charge row, you have to do something similar, but it's slightly more complicated because you have the polarization here. You have the row polarizations. So this, uh, this R here, this function R, is 
is a product of, of, of combination of these functions, which are the same as before, but some four by four matrices which have Lorentz indices. Okay. And the important thing is also for the, that for the charge row, the Landau level starts in minus one instead of starting from zero. So this run from minus one, zero, so on and so forth. And you can also show that for k minus one, there is only, in principle, in general, you have three polarization vectors. For a, for a vector field, you have, in general, three polarization vectors, of course, transverse to the longitudinal one. So, so you, you have three polarization vectors. However, for k minus, k minus two, which is the lowest Landau level, which is ground state, you only find one polarization vector. There's only one, which is natural because you have to have the polarization in the same direction of the magnetic field if it's, if it's a charge plus, okay? For k equal to zero, you have two polarization vectors, one in the direction of the magnetic field and the other perpendicular to the magnetic field. And only for k greater than zero, you will have three polarization vectors. Okay. Now, the particular form of the polarization vectors uh, and its matrices, uh, you, you have some freedom to choose them. Okay. So I will not discuss this. But I want to stress that these polarization vectors that appear in the case of the charged particles are not the same as the one for p equal to zero. So I will go now, uh, oops, oh, uh, rather fast to the results, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> what, what did I do? I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. So this is the mean field. So this has to show you the, the parameters we use, which are standard parameters. And uh, we choose this alpha in order to get uh, a reason of eta prime mass, et, et, eta primes. So this is to show that we have magnetic catalysis and the result is very similar to the lattice one. Anyway, so this, is, this, this, this means that everything is OK, at, at least at mean field level. So here I'm showing the neutral mesons masses as a function of the magnetic field. And as you see, I, I'm using a tilde here because these are not real uh, pions or rows because they are mixed. So they have a combination between the pi three, pi zero, the rho, and, and the omega. So everything is mixed here. However, I call this, this pi because the pi three is the one that has maximum contribution to this state. And the same happened with eta, and the same happened with rho and omega. And you see, the overall picture here is that pseudo-scalar particles, due to the mixings and the magnetic field, pseudo-scalar particles decrease, the masses decrease with the magnetic field, while the vectors increase with the magnetic field. So I think this, uh, this table is, is useful. You see, I mean, the, 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 for example, the pi tilde is a combination of all these four states. And for the K1, so it's the lowest state, you see that pi 3 is the largest, larger combination. But as you increase the magnetic field, this, com this coefficient decreases a bit with the magnetic field. So as you increase the magnetic field, in a way, uh, the, the state gets spread between the other possible states. This the second state you see is basically eta, so it's basically pi zero. And again, as you increase the magnetic field, the, the coefficient decreases in terms of, of the others. Uh, one important thing is that the omega, you see, is basically u, and the d, the rho tilde is basically d, okay? And, and this is natural because in, in, in this, for this case, the, the flavor mix is not so important and the magnetic field tends to distinguish between the u and d components because the effect on the magnetic field is larger in the u 
on the U because it has larger mass. So, okay. So this, this is to show the effect of the mixing, mixing in the lowest state, so the so-called pi states. So if you set alpha equal to zero, flavor out of the couple, so you have the, P, the pi U and pi D. And again, since the masses of this particle decrease with the magnetic field, the effect has to be larger for the state that has the larger charge. So it's, this means that the pi U has to go faster down than the pi U. And, and you see that the effect of the mixing is, is not so small. I mean, it's so small. And the same happens and for, for, for other combinations of alpha. But you also see that for, even for alpha 0.1, which is rather small, uh, the results are very similar as to alpha equal to, to five. Okay. So uh, this is the comparison of the lowest pi, which is with mixing and without mixing as compared with the lattice calculation. So somehow uh, the mixing makes the pi to be uh, somehow too low. Okay. Well, I skip. This is for the plus the spin plus minus one, which was shown by by William. In in the case of William, he only included uh, the isovector row. Here I'm including the isovector and isoscalar. And if you have alpha equal point half, the black line here would be exactly the row that William calculated. And since, and since we use a different regularization for the vacuum, it was interested to, go, to compare the result, and they are very similar. I, I will not show that, but this is very nice. Well, this is the effect of including uh, B-dependent couplings. It's not so, so important. So B-dependent couplings do not have a big influence. And I wanted to come to this result, which I think is very important, is that uh, this is the lowest row, which is the charge row with k minus k minus one. Okay. For the k minus one, there is no mixing with the pion because the pion cannot have k minus one. So, the, so this is alone. There is no mixing. And this is the, for the point like. This was the point that corresponds to this expression for the energy, and this was used by Chernot uh, to suggest the possibility of a vacuum superconductor. Okay. And this is our result if you co use co coupling constants, which are constant, <laughs> that do not depend on the magnetic field. And if you, you include some uh, coupling constants that depend on the magnetic field, it gets down a bit and gets closer to the lattice calculations. So uh, I want to stress here that the previous result using the uh, SU2 number generation model, like U and Kao, they find vacuum uh, vector condensation. And they do that, I think, is because they set the raw meson at rest and neglect the Schwinger phase. And you, could, you cannot do that for the charged particle. I mean, the charged particle in the magnetic field cannot be set at rest by definition. I mean, okay? You should not do that. You can't do that for a, because a charged particle in the magnetic field has not a well-defined momentum. The only momentum which is well-defined is one along the third direction, the regular magnetic field. But in the, in the plane, perpendicular plane has not a well-defined momentum. Q perpendicular cannot be set to zero. Well, this is for the pion. This is the lowest pion, which now is mixed with a, with a row. And here I show the composition. But again, you see that it's basically pion. This pi tilde is basically the pion. But for magnetic field of around 0.2, you have already some, some non-negligible uh, component, uh, row, row plus component. 
And this is my final transparency. Uh, here you see the effect of the mixing, the raw by mixing in the charge sector. If you don't have mixing, you have this line. And with mixing, it tends to bend a bit. So you have some repulsion, if, if you like, between the row plus and the pi plus, a large magnetic fields. And this gets closer to the lattice results. By the way, I don't know whether these results are confirmed, but uh, maybe Andrew can comment on this, that uh, because this is a result by Ding, that they found that a large magnetic fields, this uh, row plus mass tends to stabilize at least. So uh, conclusions you can read by yourself. Basically, uh, I have already said most of this, so. You Now we can discuss all the mixings. Uh, so. Sorry. Uh, please show the starting Lagrangian energy model. Energy model Lagrangian before bosonization. Because uh, my guess is your bosonization, you didn't include fields exchange the time in gamma matrix and uh, isospin space. If you include exchange times by fields transformation, it automatically generally mix all Bezons channels, then uh, what do you think? Yeah, you see, I mean, uh, usually you don't, I mean, this is the Lagrangian after first transformation. Yes, that's why. And so everything no, after, is included, after, it's okay. included. I mean, the first uh, transformation after. is already included. Ah. It, it is absorbed, if you like, in the coefficients Con on the coupling constant. Coupling constant. Yeah. Okay. That's so the only thing point? is mixing here is the axials. Combination of Lagrangian. Are, I didn't include. Depends on combination of Lagrangian. If yeah. you start from gamma mu square, then everything appears. Yeah. Okay. You know. So it, it's complete, except for the axials. Uh, axials we are doing at the moment. And, and, and I think the axials might play some role because it is known that even at 4 b equal to zero, there's a mixing between the axials and the pions. So maybe for the pions, it is important to have the pi axial mixing. This is what we are doing at the moment. Very quickly, uh, you showed that the decrease of the pion mass is uh, quite large. Uh, I don't know if you want to, oh, if, if you can go back to Ah, your, yeah, 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 the neutral one. The neutral one, yes. Yes, again. Uh, but I, the, question, the question is, uh, what happens to, uh, uh, see, because it's like 40% decrease or something. Yeah. Uh, what happens to, uh, to, to, to Goldstone's theorem in, in this case? Why, why is it that, uh, no, what, no what's happening with that Goldstone? Because, uh, of course, if you set quark masses to zero, then you are in the current limit, and of course you get a mass for for the pion equal to zero. Even Actually, I'm sorry. No, what I'm saying is that even if you run away from the current limit, yes. the pion mass is small, so it's a would be the Goldstone. Yes. Why is it decreasing its mass so much? Well, I mean, uh, recall, I mean, here is in absolute value. These are masses are small. They are always small. I mean, this is, this is, this is your interesting. Meson should be protected. I'm sorry? The, then the meson should be protected by, by Goldstone Ferry. Yeah, of, they are, of course. And they are and, not. And the, the, this, is the reason, this, this is the reason why this is 0.99, because of chiral, because of chiral symmetry. You see, you have to think about that. Your theory, in principle, you have chiral symmetry. And if you uh, set uh, flavor mixing equal to zero, you don't have flavor mixing. You, you have two, uh, two bosons, massless bosons. One is the pi u, and the other is pi d. Okay? Now, as, you, as soon as you introduce flavor mixing, this combination doesn't work anymore. The only, the only one that works is the isovector combination, 
which is a pi 3, the usual pi 3. So that's why this goes up. So in this case, they are basically degenerate, pi, pi u and pi d. I mean, they are very similar. But as soon as you put alpha different from 0, you have pi 3 that stays at 0, and this eta that get massive. OK? The mixing is uh, responsible for the not the But now if you put masses, then the pi, on the pi 3 became massive. But it's OK. I mean, uh, and then what we find is that as you increase the magnetic field, this mass decreases a bit. But it doesn't go to zero. And there's nothing wrong with goes on zero. I mean, yeah. how to say? This is this is effect of being away from the chiral limit and have flavor mixing. But is why is, yeah. has gone too far? I don't know. I mean, I have we have tried Maybe we can discuss completely that different. In the coffee break. Sorry? <laughs> Maybe yeah. we can discuss because we're yeah. a bit late, so let's just. Just two quick, fast questions. There is a lack of a bump in Hotilda for low B. What's, it, what's the explanation for that bump? There. This? What? Yeah. Well, you see here we use dashed lines instead of using full lines. Okay? This means that we are above threshold. Once you are above threshold, uh, a lot of funny things happen. In addition, this bump appears exactly where the omega reaches. The so when you are dealing with magnetic fields, actually there are, there are a lot of thresholds. Because each time, I mean, since you have Landau levels, each time that you cross a Landau level, you get the new thresholds. Okay. So a very low B, there are a lot of thresholds. Okay. So. In other words, I wouldn't trust much what happens in this okay. region. Just That's why we use dashes line. In because, and we said that in the paper, I and mean, this is more a qualitative picture than. In, in, uh, in about the upper limit of the magnet field that you are using in JL, uh, just one GV squared is an extrapolation, right? You can trust down. There well, is an scale that we are using to say, I, I, I will trust the model until one. Why I use one? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, I wouldn't trust much yeah, more than one. You, that is, you, you use some scale to the, oh, uh, the model is valid until here. Well, right? you know, in general, the number general senior, you don't trust much more than one GV in, in any scale, which is somewhat. I'm sorry? I'm sorry? Yeah. Well, one square tends to be one. You want to go above one GB. Or below one GB. Okay. What I can say. I mean. OK. I mean, I cannot give you a complete answer of that. Here it works up to 1 GeV. Is this an answer? I don't know. I mean. Uh, hi. About the mixing, you mean the mixing interaction that appears when, when you solve the bound state equation? Or, I mean, you have specific interactions for the mixing. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you call mixing? I mean, what I I, call it's mixing. not really clear for me, because there are two mixings, two oh, types yeah, of yeah. mixings here, right? There is flavor mixing, and there is mixing between different particles with different right. spins. OK. So flavor mixing, you, you mean yeah. the two different representations, the joint and the Flavor mixing means that, uh, well, flavor mixing, that you are mixing U and D in different ways, depending on this coupling alpha, which is a tough term. OK. OK? Uh, from this is, to, this okay, is the, this, this right, is the framework it. mixing. So this all, comes from, from tough to interaction. Yeah, this comes right. from tough okay. to interaction. But okay. in addiction, 
the, yeah. the magnetic field, yeah. since has, it is a sure. pseudo vector, can yeah. mix things which spin zero and things which spin one. Okay, because uh, you have, there so you have mixing between pion and rho. So right. the, I mean, your pion, you, what I call pi tilde, is a combination of the pions and the rows. I see, because it's possible to extract another mixing from non-Bouillon Alazinho model when you solve uh, gap equations for the quarks and you solve a bound state equation for mesons. They, they, they live in different representations. And when you pass from one representation to another, it appears the so-called so quantum mixing that's very typical in neutrinos, chaos, and so on. So uh, there are two types of mixing that maybe should uh, appear okay. in this. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, another short question about the magnetic field of the dependence of the coupling constant. Uh, it, the same magnetic, you use that for the pion sector and also for the vector meson sector, the same one? Yes. And there, there is no good reason for that, except for that it was the easiest thing that we can think about. I mean, one possible understanding is that, in principle, they come from the same place. The same? From, from the same place. I mean, okay. after all, you think that all the mixing, I mean, the, all the interaction come from one gluon exchange. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and okay. what May, was maybe. mentioned. So, but it's not clear. I mean, you right. might have a different. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is, uh, we tried that too. Okay, because. Uh, and, and it didn't work much. Yeah. I mean, we actually, I should say that. Uh, if I use a different coupling constant for, for, for the row, I can go, I can make this go up. Yeah, okay. However, this must go very fast up. Yeah. So right. this doesn't work either. OK, because maybe I have a method for doing this different channel for the coupling okay. concept, but okay. you can talk later. Thank you. OK, so if there are more questions, you discuss that in the coffee break, because we're, we're late. You who drink we're, coffee we're don't, so I guess you need your coffee now. We're five Thank minutes you. late. Yeah. OK. <laughs> You got extra time because you're first, you and William. So we'll be back at 10.50. Uh, we have a change in the, in the timetable. So Luis Hernandez will talk on Thursday and...